Hi everyone, Mark here from newhometricks.com and today I'm going to take a quick look at the user interface of the Ring app available for iOS and I'm also going to take a look at the version available for Windows 10. Now this is the app that you'll use with your Ring video doorbell regardless of which model you'll use but depending on which Ring doorbell you have there will be some differences as to what features and settings are going to be exposed to you uh, when you have a look inside the app. So know that today I'm going to be using the Ring app with our Ring Video Doorbell Pro, but some of the features may vary slightly depending on which model you have. If you've got a, a standard Ring Video Doorbell or Ring Video Doorbell 2, uh, you might see settings related to the battery. Uh, that is fitted to that unit. The Ring Video Doorbell Pro doesn't have a battery, so there'll be a few different things that you'll see inside the software. So here on iOS, if I launch the Ring app, now uh, this is the primary screen that you come into when you load the app. You've got a kind of a dashboard view showing you your devices and you can scroll between them uh, horizontally across the top and down in the lower section of the screen you'll be able to see any of the recordings uh, and activity that you've got um, on your Ring doorbell. So any events that have occurred, somebody ringing the doorbell, um, live views that you've initiated, anything like that, you'll be able to see a history of that. And if you do have Ring Video Recording, um, which is an additional subscription, then all of those videos will be listed and you'll be able to tap on any of those videos and review them uh, later on. You can also use this screen to star certain videos, though if there's certain videos that you want to flag, um, you can delete them and of course you can share the videos from this screen too. Uh, you can filter the view just by tapping on the various different sections here uh, in order to uh, see the various different events in a filtered way. Now if you tap on a device, so if I tap on the front gate uh, doorbell here, uh, it takes you to more information and more settings for that particular device. So this being a Ring Video Doorbell Pro, I've got a few things I can do here. Firstly, I can enable or dis disable Ring Alerts when somebody pushes the doorbell, and I can enable or disable Motion Alerts. I can use the Live View button to connect now to the video, uh, to the uh, camera, uh, inside the Ring Video Doorbell. So if I'd like to see what's going on at the front of my house, I can press that button, and I can even initiate a two-way call. Uh, once I've activated Live View. I can go into Event History from this screen again as well, uh, and this will be uh, just the activity related to that specific device. So if you've got more than one doorbell, that's another way of filtering things. Um, you can also tap on the Device Health button here and see a few details about how your device is currently configured and is it in a healthy state. So for example, you can see the voltage is currently showing as very good, and if I tap on that, it changes to show you the actual voltage in millivolts as it is right now. It also shows you the signal strength, uh, it's giving that an assessment of good and the details of the signal. Um, it's showing me the network name and it's, this is actually connected to a Chime Pro that we have installed. Um, you'll note that we uh, installed that during the setup, so if you go and have a look at the setup video you'll uh, see that we set that up. Uh, the Chime Pro boosts your Wi-Fi network to uh, the area where you have your Ring Video Doorbell installed. And you can tap on the Change Wi-Fi Network button if you'd like to um, switch to a different wireless network. And then you've got a few other details and some tools and troubleshooting uh, sections at the bottom there. Now if I go back to the previous screen, uh, you can also tap on linked chimes to see which chimes in your home um, that you've got plugged in are connected to that Ring doorbell. Uh, and again, you can also choose whether Ring alerts or motion alerts are enabled for those chimes. Um, and then you can tap on motion settings. So as mentioned in the Ring Video Doorbell setup video, the, um, one of the ways that you'll be alerted to someone at your door is if somebody pushes the button, but you'll also be able to configure um, alerts to come through if there is motion detected at your door. And there's a few settings here that you can set. You can set motion sensitivity. Um, so if you have the slider over on the left as it is now, then motion should only be alerted if a person moves within the field of view um, of the uh, Ring Video Doorbell Pro. So a real actual human being would have to walk by in order to trigger, trigger an alert. Whereas if you slide it all the way over to the right hand side, you're going to get alerted to all motion activity, no matter how small. So it'd be very, very sensitive um, to any kind of motion activity. Um, so you can change the sensitivity here as you wish. Then you can define motion zones. and with the Ring Video Doorbell Pro, you can actually draw um, boxes um, onto the uh, video view 
and show the ring doorbell exactly where you'd like motion to be detected. So if you don't want to detect motion out on the street from cars driving past, uh, then you can exclude those areas. And if you just want to detect motion on, say, a pathway leading to your front door, then you can draw that out on the screen and it will actually allow you to then just detect motion in those areas. And then finally there's a motion schedule. So if you'd like to exclude uh, specific times of the day when you want motion alerts to come through and you, you don't want to receive motion alerts during those periods, then you can define those. So you can set some rules when you don't want motion alerts to come through. Now if I go back to the main settings screen, there are a few other things that you can do here. There's shared users. If other um, users want to have an account with uh, Ring so that they can also receive alerts, you can set that up there. And then there's Ring Partners. If you'd like to uh, connect your Ring Doorbell Pro with other security devices uh, from manufacturers that Ring partner with. Up in the top right, there's a settings button that you can press. You can rename the device. Uh, you can change the location. And you can also change doorbell kit settings. Now, what this is for is if you've uh, retrofitted Ring Video Doorbell Pro uh, into an existing doorbell system where you already had a doorbell chime inside your home already and you want to carry on using that. So what you can do is you can actually choose whether you, you have a mechanical or digital doorbell chime already wired in that you'd like to carry on using. And if you set that properly then the Ring Video Doorbell Pro should sound the regular chime that you have in your home and you can carry on using that as well as the plug-in chimes that Ring provide. We didn't have one of those so we've currently got that set to none. And finally, one thing that you can do is set the doorbell tone volume. Now what this is actually for is the volume of the audible feedback that callers to your home will hear from the Ring Video Doorbell Pro itself. So that's where you can set that volume. There's a few other settings we can take a look at inside the app as well. So if I just jump back here to the main screen for the device and then back again to the devices view. If I tap on, for example, the Chime Pro that we've got here, again, you can see device health for that and get a bit of information about the wireless network here. Um, you can see linked devices that are connected to this particular Chime, uh, so you can see the devices that are hooked up. Um, but what you will also have available to you is the ability to set the Chime tones. So if you'd like to change the sound that is played from the Chime when somebody rings the doorbell or when motion is detected, you can set that here and of course you can set the volume at the bottom as well. The test sound button, that actually allows you to play the chosen sound through the actual chime itself. So of course when you tap on one of these you will hear the tone played from your smartphone but when you press the test sound button that will actually play it through the chime itself so you can hear what that sounds like inside the home. Now if I just jump back to the main screen and tap on the hamburger menu. There are a few other things that you can do here. You can use this view to jump straight to one of the devices or set up a new device. Um, you can also go into your account details, access the help center, or log out of the app altogether. Now at this point, I'm going to switch over and take a look at the new Windows 10 app that's available. So you can have a look at how that uh, compares to the smartphone app. Okay, so this is the Windows 10 app. Um, it's actually been updated just um, in the last couple of days. Um, so at the time of recording, this is a, a brand new app and uh, it's not just a, a small update. Ring have uh, seemingly completely overhauled the app. So when I first installed this on the day that we set uh, our Ring Pro up, um, it, it looked very different. And then the other day, um, I noticed that it had changed to this new app. And this looks a lot better than the old one. So um, it's great that Ring is still paying attention to Windows 10 um, and users who want to access uh, their Ring devices from a PC as well as from a smartphone. Uh, so it's very much cross-platform in that regard. Uh, which is great. Um, so this is the brand new app and when you launch it um, you go into a very similar view to the sort of thing that you might have on your smartphone. Um, you can see all of the different events and activity that's going on, um, all of the different recordings that you have and again you can filter them just as you would be able to do uh, on your smartphone just by tapping on the various different sections along the top. Um, 
Now, if I switch over to the devices section here, um, you can see details of all of the different devices and their location. Uh, I've obviously blocked that out. Um, but you can do things like tap on your uh, ring doorbell here. So if I tap on front gate, again, we get the same sort of settings that we have available to us from the, uh, from the smartphone app. You've got the ability to turn on and off ring alerts, motion alerts, enable live view. If I go into settings, we've got all of the same sort of information available here, device health, all of that data is here. So the same sort of settings are available uh, in the Windows 10 app as you have available in the smartphone iOS app. And again, if I choose one of the chimes, for example, tap into settings, I can do things like set the ringtone. It's just a slightly different layout, something that's a bit more appropriate for Windows 10. Um, if I tap on the plus button here, um, you can't yet set up a new ring device from within this app. As it says here, we're working on a brand new set, ex set of experience for Windows. So they're obviously still working on this app behind the scenes. So you'll still have to set up your app, uh, your, your uh, doorbell via uh, an iOS or Android device. But that's okay. Um, it's great that uh, Ring are working on this and continue to develop the apps that they have on different platforms. So I'm sure in the fullness of time, the set of experience will come. But in terms of existing devices that you've already got set up, it seems fairly straightforward and it seems like you can do pretty much everything you can do um, with the smartphone apps. So both of these apps are really good, really easy to use, um, no complaints here. Obviously they continue to be updated looking at the uh, update history on uh, the iPhone for example, they seem to be putting out updates at least on a monthly basis. Um, so it's good that they're you know, fixing bugs, updating the software, continuing to put updates out there um, and it's, it's great to see that they're you know, continuing to develop the, the apps and the, uh, and the software that they put out. So if you want to read more um, about the apps and the way that they work, um, please check out the companion blog post, that's in the description below, or have a look at the website, newhometricks.com. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.